partial differential uh, differentiation in physics. As I told you, partial derivative is necessary if you have a function that depends on many variables. For example, gravitational potential energy of a system, two body system of mass small m and capital M, separated by the distance r, is a function of three Cartesian coordinates. They are x1, x2, and x3. The partial derivative with respect to x1 and x2 and x3 are exactly the same as the normal derivative, except that only x1 varies and x2 and x3 are invariant. In the case of this partial derivative with respect to x2, only x2 varies and x1 and x3 are invariant. So in this case, x1 and x2 are invariant. This, this is the partial derivative. If I have a potential energy, and if I want to compute the force, I need to take the derivative and put the negative sign on it. So force is a minus gradient of potential energy. In here, we always have to evaluate the partial differentiation. We know R is this. If I deal with radius and Cartesian components, we need to make use of chain rule frequently. For example, this is a derivative with respect to x1. And first, why don't we take the derivative with respect to r first, and then take the derivative of r with respect to x1. This is chain rule. And we know this is a single variable case. If you arrive at a single variable derivative, then you can replace with this usual notation that is 1 over r squared. So because of 1 over r squared, it becomes 1 over r plus 1 over r squared. And we need to evaluate this. If I want to evaluate this, replace this one with square root of capital X, and capital X is just inside. Capital X is this. So use chain rule again. The derivative of R with respect to X1 and X1, and because R is the square root of X, we first take the derivative with respect to capital X and take the derivative of capital X with respect to X1. And we have a derivative table here. We know how to compute this derivative. And then this one is again trivial. So this is a 2X1. So 2, 2 cancels, 2, 2 cancels to find that we have X1 over R because the square root of x is r. Therefore, this x1 over r can be substituted here. As a result, gradient, uh, partial derivative of the pot gravitational potential energy with respect to x1 is found to be this. Force is minus gradient, and gradient is E1, X1 derivative, E2, X2 derivative, E3, X3 derivative. And we know everything, everything, and they are X1 over R. We have pulled this 1 of R squared out, and X1 over R, X2 over R, X3 over R. And x1, o, e1, x2, e2, x3, e3. What's that? This is x vector. 
and x vector divided by r. So x vector divided by its magnitude. It is unit radio vector. Therefore, we have reproduced universal gravitational force developed by Newton. If it is unit radio vector, then we have a z axis, polar angle, this is r, and z is r cosine. This is unit, so I have removed this r here, so cosine. And on the xy plane, you will find the planar radius. This planar radius is r sine theta. Right? And then you will have x axis, y axis. There is a azimuthal angle. So x component is rho cosine phi, y component is a rho sine phi. That's the reason why we have a unit radio vector has a polar angle and a smaller angle dependence as it is.